So when I position it um, across our uh, four pillars, um, Promethium plays and enables several capabilities within the data management space, as well as it's, it's providing a really, really compelling spin on data ops and machine learning ops and the, the actual movement of data, right? Without actually moving data, right? So with that, KC, I'm gonna turn it over to you, sir, and let's see what you guys got. Pretty exciting stuff. All right, sounds good. Awesome, thanks, uh, thanks, Mike, thanks, Julie. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen now. Let's do this. All right. Can everyone see uh, my presentation? Yes, sir, we sure yeah. can. Okay. All right, great. Uh, so hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Casey Lai. I am the founder and CEO of Prometheum. Uh, prior to this, I was actually president and CEO of a data catalog company called Waterline Data, uh, which is now part of Hitachi Ventara. Um, love doing startups, love bringing new innovative technologies to market. Uh, the rest of the team has a lot of cloud data management and analytics experience, um, you know, coming from places like Oracle, Workday, Informatica, AWS, Microsoft, et cetera. Um, and so we're really passionate about just solving problems in analytics uh, and also in data management. And the main problem that we're tackling is one that I heard a lot when I was uh, at my previous company. And that was, you know, the business people just want to get data uh, faster, right? And so uh, everyone's heard of this term self-service analytics. And, you know, the, it's a little bit uh, misleading because I think most people think of self-service analytics as like this really easy process where you ask a question and magically in a few minutes, everything is there, ready for you uh, in Tableau, in Looker, in Power BI, whatever your BI tool is, and bam, you get the answer. Um, but in order for that to happen, and the folks who actually are uh, in the data management side of the house, probably realize there's a lot of work that needs to happen, right, um, ahead of time, right? You gotta go through a discovery process. You have to figure out where to find data across multiple data sources. And if the data isn't in the same data lake or data warehouse, you probably have to do an ETL and move the data. Uh, and then you probably move too much, so you have to verify what you need, what you don't need. Then if the data is across you know, multiple stuff, you have to figure out how to put them together. Uh, then you have to do the prep process. Then before that, you know, then you can get to the point where you can query, and then visualize. And so when we talk to our customers, what they tell us is that this is just a very uh, painful uh, process that continuously happens that involves uh, multiple teams of people using multiple tools from multiple vendors that oftentimes don't integrate with each other. Uh, and so it takes a long time, right, to actually be able to get through this process. And sometimes it could take up to four months. And so they ask, you know, the question, well, how, how can we possibly be a data-driven organization if it takes four months for us to do this all the time. Uh, and that's the problem that we see happen time and time again. And you might ask, well, why the heck do we do this? Well, we do it today because, you know, in order for a BI tool to work, right, you need a nice data set, right? In the old days, we called it a data cube or a data mart, but you basically need this nice data set where all the data is actually now put together nicely to talk to your BI tool. The problem is if you need something different, uh, if you need to refresh the data, this process starts all over again, uh, which becomes really painful. So we wanted to solve this problem, and I specifically wanted to solve this problem because I felt that while data catalogs were great from a discovery perspective, it still didn't do all the other steps that you needed. And so we understand why you need this nice, perfect data set to talk to your BI tool, but, and we wanna give you that capability, but we wanna do it without moving data, right? And so you can have all the benefits of this cube or Mars or, uh, perfect data set to go into Tableau, your Power BI, uh, your, your Looker, uh, but you don't need to move the data. You can instantly refresh it and you can actually get very granular answers. Uh, you don't need to say, I want to know all revenue by all products by all time. Uh, you can say, I want to know, hey, just the revenue for V6 engines made out of, you know, aluminum uh, made from Mexico that was shipped to Michigan in spring of, you know, 2019. So that's kind of the power of Prometheum is being able to do this and being able to have the ability to make these fast and granular changes uh, and get the answers done literally in minutes. So the value that we bring to our customers is, you know, before what used to take a four month process uh, involving, you know, a lot of different folks from data engineers and analysts and business using a bunch of different tools from different vendors, um, you know, we can give you 
one product where one person could actually get through the same process and create this nice uh, data set or data cube uh, to get to your BI tool in less than three minutes. So that's the problem that we're solving. And, and by doing this, organizations can now not only get through more projects uh, from a BI perspective, but they can iterate a lot faster, right? Because a lot of times with BI, you don't necessarily, uh, you know, just ask want to ask one question, or you don't necessarily know if that first question you ask is the final question. And so it's an iterative process. But if it takes you months or weeks or days to iterate, it, it's very hard to to be agile. And so that's what we offer with Prometheum is the ability to get this very quickly. And so if you don't think you have the right answer, we'll try this combination. Right? Okay, two minutes, you got it. Okay this didn't look good, try this other combination. Uh, and so it really gives the iteration and the power to experiment um, as, well as, as well as the ability to kind of get answers very, very quickly, again, uh, without the need to actually move the data, right? And so we don't have to do the ETL. Um, there's a lot of benefits, right? Uh, number one, uh, this is also a no code platform. So you don't have to write any SQL if you don't want to. Uh, you can. We also have a section for you if for the folks who are power users and really want to. Uh, but, you know, we also have built a product where you don't have to write any SQL. Uh, you don't need a lot of like, professional services or actually you don't need any professional services uh, to get started. Uh, typical install takes about 30 minutes and, you know, you don't need any pre-work. So you don't need to predefine data models. You don't need to pre-tag things. You don't need to, uh, you know, pre-built, uh, you know, data sets and joins, et cetera. Um, you can just connect us to your data sources and we can go from there. So typically, you know, customers can actually get, you know, within one hour, they can install the product and start asking questions and start using the product to answer uh, key questions. So um, a lot of customers are super excited about what we've had. Um, a lot of people, um, you know, have been trying to do this manually or cobbling things up with a lot of professional services. And so, we're really solving a big problem here uh, at Prometheum, and and I'd love to you know show you guys the product um, a little bit more and kind of get into that. So before I do that, I just want to kind of address the the architecture because I'm sure there's going to be uh, some of these questions. So I think it's just easier to talk about the architecture before we go right into the demo. So here, you know, you see a, a sample customer's environment. Um, and so they have data sources and we support over 200 different data sources. So SaaS applications, um, you know, anything that's already DMS, uh, anything that's no SQL, anything that's, you know, HDFS based, anything that's S3 based, <laughs> anything that's uh, Hive based, uh, we can actually support. And Prometheum is a SaaS application. Right, so there's nothing for you to manage uh, from that perspective. However, uh, we don't want to query your data over public IP. We don't want you to move data to us, right? So what we've done is, you know, we've built uh, what we call an intelligent edge, uh, which is a container, which we ask the customers to install in their uh, VPC. And with this, the container does three things, right? One is there's a discover bond, which actually uh, connects with different data sources and pulls the metadata. Uh, two is if you want query, uh, query access, you know, we actually install a Presto cluster. Uh, we partner with Starburst. Uh, so the customer doesn't need to install anything, doesn't need to manage anything. We'll do it directly ourselves uh, for you as part of a, you know, a nice uh, you know, cloud formation template. And then three, you know, while we can use, you know, your existing BI tool and we encourage you to use your existing BI tool, yeah, some customers actually want uh, to use Prometheum's internal BI tool um, to be able to very quickly you know, see the answers. And so if you do, uh, we do package that up. We do offer it for you guys. Um, the idea is not to compete with our partners, uh, Looker, Tableau, Power BI. Yeah, the idea is quickly get an answer and see, right, if you want to spend more time in Tableau and Looker uh, to customize it, to, you know, productionize uh, that dashboard. Uh, but it gives you a quick way of, you know, since, You've now gone from the discovery of the data, the assembly, the prep, the query. You might as well be able to see very quickly what the output looks like, right? And that's why we actually offer uh, basic visualization here. Okay. So that's the architecture of the product. Um, and now we'll actually uh, show you guys the product. Okay. 
And we'll go through a couple of workflows, um, but you know, here you can actually see, you know, when you come into the product, um, a couple things. You know, one is um, it's very easy to connect to different data sources, right? And you know, when we connect, um, you know, we someone enters this information. It's usually someone from IT. You enter once, and when we connect, right? We'll not only just connect, but we'll also move the metadata over as well as uh, in, um, initiate the connection with the Presto cluster. That way, if you want to do queries, you can actually do that. And once it's done, you know, it looks like all the data acts, has actually moved into Prometheum, but we actually have not moved any data at all. Uh, but you do get a sin, sin, uh, single repository um, view of all the different tables, all the different files from all the different sources uh, that you have. and so. Uh, you know, for example, I can say I really only want to see things in Snowflake and I really want to see things in Oracle. I can just uh, filter for that. Um, and I could just search for something uh, very easily, right? So I can just type in something I want to search for. Let's say I want to search for date. Uh, and it'll search across all the different data sources and it'll tell you it, useful information, um, you know, such as, you know, hey, you know, what's the name, what's the location, which vendor is it part of? Uh, but I'll also tell you, you know, has it been queried? How many times has it been queried? Um, have you created answers with it? You know, are there tags with it? And so, you know, it gives you, gives the user an idea of, you know, maybe, you know, limit, narrow down which one they want to look at. Um, and if you want to select, you know, something to take a look at in more detail, you can simply just click on it and you'll see, you know, more information, right, at this point. So, you know, I can see tags, right, that people have created at the table level. Uh, I could see, you know, the columns, right, and, you know, the specific column names. I could see the sampling of the, the values, and I could see tags at the column level, um, and I could add uh, tags, right? So, great data, right? So, I can easily add a tag there, and if that's not enough, we can also show you a preview uh, of the entire table as well. And notice we're able to give you sampling preview without moving the data. So when I click this X, everything's gone. So there's no data stored, uh, no data moved. So it's very secure, um, but you see how fast it is, right? If you need to see something, um, you know, you, it looks like you have all the data that's already there. Uh, so you get the best of both worlds. And, you know, while that's great, you know, I think, you know, being able to see the tags, being able to see the actual data, the other thing that's very helpful is actually seeing the questions uh, that people have asked using that particular table, because it actually gives you a nice semantic uh, understanding of what this data actually means. Um, so, for example, right, you know, I have two tables here. They're exactly the same name. Um, yeah, they're in different locations, and I could see that same number of columns, similar number of tags, you know, but the one from Oracle has been queried a lot more than the one from Snowflake. Uh, and also, if I click on the one from Snowflake, I see that it's a different question, right? This one is about the impact on subscription uh, revenue based on cancellation reason and package types. And this one is actually based on the question is, what is the revenue by agent by location? So it helps give you kind of these different types of context so that you can understand, oh, this is, this is how it's actually being used, right? And so if I want to see kind of how it's actually being used, I can simply click on one of the questions. And we'll take you there. Uh, we'll actually take you to that question itself. Uh, and so here you can see, hey, this is the question that was asked. And you actually see there's two answers. So you can actually create multiple answers within Prometheum uh, because sometimes marketing has a different answer, sales has a different answer, uh, and you want to know. And underneath each answer, if you open it up, right, there are ways where you can see more detail, right? So in this case, um, I'll open it up and I can see there's a dashboard here, right, that I can take a look at. Um, and if I want to get more detail, right, I can actually click on the, uh, the answer itself and Prometheum will show you how the answer was actually put together, okay? So let's take a look here. So I clicked on this and it actually told me um, on the left-hand side, the tables that were actually used, right? Uh, which one was the central table? Uh, what's the other table I used? Uh, how, you know, how did I join it? I did a left join. And so there are these three tables. It showed me the group buys, and you can see the group buys in more detail here. You can also see the lineage here, and you can actually see the preview of the answers here, 
and you can see the uh, visualization here as well. Um, and you can edit the visualization. So let's say I don't want this to be a pie chart. I really wanted this to be a bar chart, right? So very easy for me to go ahead and change that, right? Or you know, maybe I want to create a different visualization. Um, I want to look at status and I want to look at revenue, right? Uh, active, inactive, right? Very easy, boom, right? So it's very easy to actually, um, you know, have the ability to actually answer the questions, but it's also very easy to uh, create the dashboards that are associated with the questions and then um, having all that in one place, right? So what we offer Promethium is now the ability to have in a single place all the questions that your business users have asked, right? Um, users can actually favor questions. Um, you know, they can actually rate and review questions. You can only, you can say, I just only want to look at things that are my questions, or I only want to look at questions that have been answered. I only want to look at hot questions. Uh, so there's all sorts of ways that users can actually narrow down what they're looking for. Um, they can say, I want to narrow down by questions that's only asked by a certain person. And so it's nice for the users to be able to come in here and just search, right, for any question uh, that they're looking for and, you know, being able to, you know, instantly see the answer, right? Uh, and, and if they need to, they can collaborate with the data team and say, hey, I didn't understand this. Tell me how you actually did it. Uh, or if they're happy and they see the dashboard, right, um, of being able to see the answers associated with it, great. Um, and then a data person could actually come in here, like maybe I'm new to an organization and someone has left, but, you know, I can now come in here and I can see, you know, what my predecessor actually did in terms of answering this question, uh, which oftentimes happens a lot because when people move from organization to organization, you know, they don't know what the other person actually did. And so the nice part about this is, you know, for me, they'll actually show you, right, uh, what what data was used, where it came from, how it was assembled, the preview. Uh, we even show you the SQL that's automatically generated as well. So that way, uh, if people want to take this, make modifications, copy it, uh, go to Tableau, go to B other BI tools, they, they can easily do that. Um, and so what's nice about this is, you know, not only have we automated the, the entire process, which I'll actually show you by creating a question, um, but you have now something that's richer, much richer than a, a traditional catalog, right? Um, you, you have more than just the data and the tags, right? You actually now know the assembly directions. You actually now know uh, the answers uh, that also come along with it. And you actually know, you know, the context, right? You know, what question was it associated with? And you can see who asked it. You can see how popular it is. So all these things actually, you know, make it much, a much richer, more interactive, more collaborative experience, uh, all designed to not only help people get the data, the answers much faster, but help them find the more relevant answers much faster, right? Okay, um, so now I'm gonna show you um, that I didn't have to do any pre-work. Uh, so we're actually going to create a question from scratch and I'm gonna, I'm going to select this one. I'm going to make sure that you guys don't think uh, I spent all night here uh, building this. And so it's already nice pre-built, right? So this is the question, right? What is the, what is the impact on revenue subscription based on cancellation and package types? So here's what I'm going to do, folks. I'm going to delete this. Okay, so it's gone. And so what I normally would do if I was a business user is I'd come in, right? I'd ask that question. Um, and the first thing we'll do is we'll say, hey, you know, do we find similar questions? That way it helps avoid the work that you have to do if someone's already asked a similar question. In this case, there isn't. So I'm going to request my data team, can you please answer this for me? And as a business user, I'm done, right? I can copy this, I can Slack someone, email someone, uh, but I'm done. And my data team is going to get an alert saying, you know, someone has now requested this. Can you come in here uh, and answer the question? And so if, as, a, as a data analyst, right now I'm, I'm logged in as a super admin, so I can't see everything. Um, but as a data analyst, you would come in, and the first thing you would do is you would say, hey, can Promethean, can you help me do a search on what data I need to be able to answer this question? And so one of the things you can see here is we automatically created tags to help you with the search. Uh, and, and you can actually modify this, right? So for example, maybe I want to make this simple or just look at a reason, revenue, cancellation package, and subscription. 
And I'm going to go ahead and select add answer. And from here, Promethium is going to look through the entire uh, date, you know, universe or enterprise uh, of data sources you connected us to. So there's stuff in Salesforce, there's stuff in S3 buckets, there's stuff in Snowflake, uh, there's stuff in MySQL, there's stuff in Oracle. Um, but we're going to do a page rank, if you will, right? So this is using our own uh, AI to kind of rank and figure out for you where we think the best, uh, you know, location for the data is and why. And so if you hover over this, you'll see, hey, this table has information on subscription, call reason, deactivation code. Uh, this one has information on package, revenue. This one has information on reason and cancellation. So there's a good chance that these three tables can actually answer the question. Um, and again, if you don't trust us, right, you can always do what I did earlier, which is, you know, I click on the table, I want to see where it came from, I want to see the tags, I want to see, you know, the column names, I want to see the sample values, um, you know, and I actually want to see the table itself. So, so you can absolutely do that. Um, but let's say you trust Prometheum or say, hey, I'm going to go with it. Let's start building the question. And so you just have to start by selecting one table. Just give us a breadcrumb, if you will, and we'll take it from there and go through the process. So I've selected this first table. And the first thing that we're going to do is, you know, we'll do a query against the table and show you the uh, sample results here so you can actually see what it looks like. So I have 65 columns, right, um, 100 rows, and here's my, here's my results. And typically what I like to do, and everyone has their different way, but I like to do is, hey, maybe if I'm lazy, which I am, I want to see if I can answer the question with one table. Uh, and so if you, if you notice, everything is really search-based in Prometheum. So I'm going to search, right? Um, can I look for cancellation reasons? I don't, re I don't have cancellation. I have some reason. Um, looks like I have some information on package, so that's great. Uh, but do I have information on revenue? I don't have information on revenue. So what that tells me is I probably need something on cancellation. I probably need something on revenue before I can answer this question. And so that just tends for me to say, go and join another table, right? Uh, and, you know, again, we'll automatically rank things that are, you know, joinable uh, for you. And so, you know, you can look at this and, and say, okay, there's stuff in here on agent. Um, looks like I don't really need agent, but you know, what about this table? Hey, there's billings, there's revenue, right? Um, and it looks like there's package information as well. So this might be a good one for me to join, but this one's actually from Snowflake, right? It's not Oracle, uh, but that's okay because we actually have data virtualization capabilities. So uh, as long as you want to pick it and Prometheum is connected to that data source, we can actually do the join and query for you. And not only that, we'll automatically also suggest um, the join type for you if you if it's available. If it's not available, right? In this case, you can say, "Hey, go ahead and create your own," right? So, you know, you know, I can say, "Hey, okay, so it's Prometheum suggested um, an outer join, um, and you know, let's see if I've got something here that I can join. It looks like I do, right? It looks like I can join plan ID, right, and plan ID, right, and I can change the, the different type of join operators." Um, and, you know, once I do this, you know, Prometheum will automatically do the join without moving the data. So that's the cool part is um, I now have this freedom and flexibility to essentially see what relationships I could have across, you know, all the different data sources that I've connected to in Prometheum uh, without having to move the data. Now, one thing I always like to do is when I do do a join is I like to make sure the null, null values, right? So I know that originally I had 65 columns. So I want to look at the last 10, right? When I actually did the join and so far so good. I don't have any null values. Uh, that's awesome, right? And so I've got revenue now. And if you remember, the other thing I really needed was, you know, cancellation reason. So, you know, I can just search for the word cancel and it looks like, you know, reason code is probably the best place uh, that I actually have that. I've got cancellation here. And again, so everything is just, as you can search, we will give you the detail you need, right? And when I look at this table, I see sample value, voluntary, poor coverage. It's probably a decent shot that this is reason code. This is reason stuff that I need. Um, and I can go ahead and just select it. 
Um, and in this case, right, Promethium has actually gone beyond uh, identifying you know, just the joint type. It's already identified the joint key for me as well. So I don't even need to do that, right? So I just need to go with Promethium's recommendation. Um, so now we're joining two Oracle tables and one Snowflake table. And at every step of the way, uh, Promethium will always give you a preview. So that way you can always kind of go back and see, you know, what happened the last time, what's the impact analysis. Um, so now I went from 75 columns to 83 columns, right? Uh, and again, I always like to go back and, you know, check to see there's no null values. That's fantastic. So it looks like I have most of the data, right? So I can try to, if I try to visualize this, right? I've got can't I've got reason I've got different re, re, if I can spell right uh, different reason stuff that I have um, and you know I have a whole bunch of uh, measures uh, that I can select as well but one thing I notice is I got some pretty ugly column names right so I want to make this much friendlier to the business user so with Promethium you can do uh, some basic prep so for example. You know, as a data analyst or data engineer, I, I, I probably, once I look at the data, or well, I'm probably somewhat familiar with it. Um, so I can, for example, I know it's MER, um, it's probably revenue, but you know, no one knows what MER is. And LEN is probably subscription term, but nobody knows what LEN means. So why do I make this a little bit easier uh, for my business users? So let's do that. Let me type in MER. And I can just come in here and say, I'm going to change this to revenue without changing the original column name. The original column name will always be preserved. It will not be changed at the source. So that way you don't have to do any crazy um, MDM. Um, and then the other one that we're looking for was LEN. Uh, and I'm going to call this right term. So now I've gone ahead and I've gone ahead and you know, made these changes. And so um, now going forward, I can search and I can plot by revenue and term. I don't have to use those uh, esoteric terms, right? So once I do the preview, it will go and uh, execute these changes. Uh, so that way I'll have the new tables, uh, the new column name to use. Um, pretty fast, it's done. And the last thing I might want to do is, you know, I might want to do a group by, right? Just so my users don't have to look at all 83 columns. I might want to just give them something a little bit easier, right? And so we know that this one is about reason and package. So let me include a bunch of, you know, things on reason that are here. And let me include some things on package that are here. And then let me just do an aggregation, right, on revenue and notice I typed in revenue and it automatically found for me the original column name. So I didn't have to search for the original column name. And I could just make this something a little bit easier, say brand total. Great. So now I've done that. I'm going to add my group by and the minute I do that, my linux chart updates that I've done uh, a group by operation. Um, and so then I'm going to preview the data, right? Like I said, every step of the way, we will uh, show you the actual preview results so that you can see you know, what changed uh, the next time you did it. And so now we're only showing five columns out of the 83, right? Um, and so the user can look at this, the user can say, hey, why don't I um, you know, take the SQL and that we've automatically generate for you. Let me go to Tableau with it, um, you know, or not. You don't have to go to Tableau with it or Power BI or Looker. Um, or I could say before I do that, let me just take a look at it really quickly, right, to, to make sure it's okay. So, you know, maybe I can see, you know, let's look at a revenue by reasoning. Okay, great. That's what it looks like. Um, you know, let me do another one where I want to see a uh, package uh, and uh, revenue. Right. Great, that's what it looks like. Um, and then let me do another one where I want to see, you know, maybe, um, you know, package by, you know, reason code type, right? Oh, it's by revenue, right? And let me group it by reason code type, right? Um, and I don't like this as a chart, right? Maybe I want to turn this into uh, a pie chart, right? And maybe I want to add, you know, some show some data labels. So, um, so you see how it's very easy for me to just create uh, the different visualization here, and then I could go ahead and create a dashboard. Um, so that way, next time someone asks this question or select this question, the answers 
are associated with it, right? So if I go back to this question, um, you know, I, I should be able to, number one, I should be able to see this new question, right? Uh, based on the, the table I was at it, what's the impact? Uh, so it's actually there, so that's great. And then number two, when someone comes here, right? Um, they can actually go in and see the work immediately that we did. So that way the, data, the new data analyst or the new data engineer could immediately have one place to go to and show well, exactly what tables did you use from where, how did you join them, how did you group them, what's the preview of the results, right? What are, what's the visualization that was created, uh, what's the SQL. So all in one place it's here, um, you know, users can review and rate them. Um, you know, they can favor them if they want. So, you know, now you have something where the business users, right, can just come in, search for the question, get the answer, but the data user can also have all the details that they can share uh, with other members of the team, uh, all in one place. And so this really kind of uh, makes the collaboration much simpler, uh, but it also, as you can see, you know, we created that data set cube, whatever model you want to call it, in a matter of minutes, right? We were able to do this, um, you know, simply by using search, right? Just typing for stuff. Um, and so very quickly, we're able to get that answer it and create something that we can now give the uh, business teams to actually consume. So I'm gonna stop here for a bit uh, and um, see if there's any questions or Mike and Julie, do you want me to keep going? Let, let me know how you guys wanna do it. Yeah, well, we got a few questions queued up, Casey. Let's go. If you mind spending a little bit of time in that, and then we can continue to dig in if you've got more effect. Yeah. Do you want to show us? Okay, cool. Happy to do it. Yeah. Right. So the source one, I love, you know, one of our, one of our participants, Francesco, is a great, great friend of ours, um, and asks some great probing questions. So he said, what is the secret? <laughs> How did you crack the code that the tech giants cannot seem to accomplish? <laughs> um, well, you know, I... There used to be this little number here at the bottom of uh, the app that actually showed you what version of the product it was on. Um, and I got the developers to take it out once we hit 250, because uh, I thought it was kind of embarrassing that we failed 250 times. Uh, so, so Francesco, you know, the, the short answer was there was a lot of trial and error. Uh, and again, and having customers tell us, well, what are you thinking? You told, you know, no, this makes no sense. Um, but, you know, I, I think the, the other part that we did was, um, you know, we figured out how to leverage, uh, how to, number one, connect to all available data sources. So we built um, all the connectors to all available data sources. We figured out how to extract metadata efficiently, quickly, without causing a load. And then from there, a lot of the IP was based on the metadata, figuring out relationships, figuring out all the things you normally would do if the data was physically loaded into a single data warehouse, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so that gave us now, okay, I can now discover, I can now map things. And then the thing that we needed to do after that was, uh, well, if I can map things and I know what things could join, the next thing you logically want to do is you want to query the data, right? Um, now I make it sound like we were so smart, we figured it out. I'm not going to lie to you, Francesco. Uh, this was, these are all customer led things where customers say, well, now that you found it, now that you told me what you can join, you got to help me query it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we had to figure out how to do data virtualization and we were very lucky to find great partners, um, Starburst. Uh, so there were awesome folks that we got connected with and uh, it turned out that it was actually a really nice, you know, match made in heaven because, you know, Starburst needs to know where your data is and it needs to know the you know, SQL and we were able to automatically generate that. And so it was a very easy integration um, and then once we had that, it was really about, um, you know, doing the prep piece, right? And it was doing enough of the prep so that, you know, you can answer the question, like, I'm not gonna lie to you, we don't have all the prep features that a full-blown prep tool like Trifacta has, but as you can see, it, it's enough, right? I can change column names, I can concatenate things, I can join, I can filter, I can union. It's enough for business people to get an answer. Mm -hmm. And then lastly was the, the visualization uh, again, I, I, this was one I'll actually openly admit, I did not want to build a visualization, guys. <laughs> I wanted to just go to Tableau, go to Looker and call it a day. Uh -huh. And every customer told us we needed to, be, just so that we could get something simple and that they could see uh, yeah. before they went to Tableau and Looker. 
So, so thank you for that explanation. So mm -hmm. an observation I'm having is I did you a little bit of disservice with the positioning on the front end. I should have positioned your product to also be a, a really powerful enabler for self-service analytics, right? Um, the other observation is you're, you're covering a pretty wide life cycle of the analytic journey, if you will, right? From source mm -hmm. to understanding the source and, and all that. Yeah. Um, so who are your competitors? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, to be honest, I mean, most of the competitors are, you know, you, you hire Accenture to come in here and cobble this up to you, for you with, you know, eight different products, right? Uh, mm -hmm. A catalog from this vendor, a prep tool from that vendor, five different BI tools, and, you uh -huh. know, two different virtualization tools, and 10 data lakes. So it, it, it's really, our competition is really kind of the, the custom work that you would have paid someone 18 months to do, and it may or may not work after 18 months. Uh -huh. um, and so that's kind of who we initially would compete against because we don't replace the data source. We don't replace the BI tool. Now, what's been interesting, Mike, uh, over the last six months, um, the, the BI, the, the SIs have actually come back to us and say, you know, it's not so bad. It's not as competitive as you think because oftentimes we get brought in to do this work and we spend all this time doing it and the customers are unhappy with us. And mm -hmm. that's not good for us because we may not get a renewed business. So now they're having conversations with us and say, Mr. Customer, why don't you use Promethean first? See what answers you want. And these are the answers. That will drive our decision on what pipeline to build for you. That will drive our decision on maybe what other catalog and governance tools that you would need. Um, and you know, the size of your data lake may not need to be so big. Uh, so it's actually kind of come around where we, we actually can be part of the SIs, but being at the beginning as opposed to at the very end. Yeah, it, 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 yeah. what I'm seeing is an incredible enabler in that. And, and just hearing the fact that you used set-based design and set-based engineering to constantly whittle down and get to um, the product that you're at, you know, you, where you said 200 failures, well, I see that as 200 <laughs> Where you're eliminating ideas. You're using lean agile approach. That's, a, that's an incredible story there. Um, all right, let me get in another question. Um, yeah. Integration partners, do you integrate with ThoughtSpot? We do. Um, so we, again, um, one of the things that I, I, I'm very proud of the team is the, the richness of the API layer uh, at every step of the way, right? So uh, on the discovery part, we can integrate with different catalogs. Right on the prep part, we're going to integrate with uh, you know Trifecta, Paxata, anyone else. Um, you can plug this into Microsoft Excel. Uh, you can plug it to any BI tool, and so uh, basically, like with Thoughtspot, anything that has a JDBC connector, right, we can integrate with them. For example, mm -hmm. uh, or if there's a Presto connector, we can integrate with them as well. So we have a lot of flexibilities, and so um, we have some customers we're talking to where they love Thoughtspot's uh, visualization. They love Spot IQ, right? But, you know, it's a little hard with Foxbot in, in the early days where you have to move everything over and pre-design the data model. Mm -hmm. And you would rather start with Prometheum, right? Let me ask the question. Let me quickly build something together and bam, that's the one I want. Let me just use, move that piece into Foxbot and then do the spot IQ from there. So it's actually a nice story from that perspective. Yeah, it's a good front end um, uh, enabling mm -hmm. for use cases. I mean, yep. I'm, I'm seeing, you know, the continuous innovation engine. You know, it's like, I'm going to throw a question out. That's my new intake. You guys figure it out and come back with the answer. Yeah. Uh, are you seeing, <laughs> yep. you, you mentioned Starburst um, and your, your partnership and leverage of, of their capabilities. Um, so mm -hmm. are you seeing, uh, are you seeing a decent amount of data mesh kind of use cases where, where Promethean is, is part of the enabling stack? Um, you know, I, I think, the, the short answer is we're probably, the short answer is yes, the, the technology can be part of the stack. The longer term, the longer answer is um, we often get um, brought in or more sucked in by people who are just trying to get answers quickly. And so mm -hmm. like that becomes like just the first use case, which is it's usually the data team that says my backlog's too big, business users are breathing down my neck. You know, I need something like Prometheum to very quickly, you know, go. And then um, we've seen uh, organizations where 
you know, when we build this product, we said, hey, we just want the business answer, uh, users to search for questions, ask for questions, and rate and review. Mm-hmm. But we've seen organizations that, you know, your product is actually so easy to use. Can I give the building capability to my business users? Like some, not all of them, but some pretty decently sharp business analysts who, you know, are still data savvy. Um, and so that's where we're seeing kind of a lot of the adoption, um, you know, some of the technologies there. But yeah, I mean, technically, yes, and I would love, I'd love to work with someone to kind of, you know, get that use case going. Yeah, okay, all right. Um, what's, the me- what's your mechanism for getting to the lineage? Yeah, so, so we, uh, any, any question you answer through Prometheum, we generate the lineage. Um, now, if you already have lineage through existing data catalogs, for example, like we have like connectors to like Calibra or to Atlas that, you know, we could bring them in. Um, and so that way, when you're discovering data, for example, right, there might be, you know, if there's available lineage, there'll be another column here and said, hey, here's some lineage you can check out. Um, mm-hmm. it's, it'll be a link that you can then, you can then see in Calibra or whatever, uh, Informatica, um, the different tools that they have. It's my mm-hmm. demo system, so I'm not connected to those tools right now. But, um, you know, having come from a catalog space, Mike, I can tell you, Nobody has end-to-end lineage, <laughs> unfortunately, because they can only do what they can touch and see. Uh, and so it, it was one of those that we kind of just had to focus as a startup and say, we're only going to do uh, the lineage for the questions that we create and anything else we'll integrate with your data catalog. And as long as they have it, uh, we'll show it. But we didn't want to go too, too far into that, uh, you know, foray too far into that space. Yeah. So you got some organic capability through the, the creation of a question that then turns into the answer and the lineage behind it. And you can bring stuff in. Exactly. Uh, yeah. And, and that yeah. question was from Anna. I'm going to pile onto that and ask, what's the, um, what are the mechanics for determining what's joinable when I'm trying to answer that question? Yeah. So that's actually a lot of proprietary work that we've done uh, where we actually, you know, look at, look at, you know, a number, a, a number of factors in our algorithm, everything from uh, what it's called, what its data type is, um, you know, sampling of the values, right? So the values look like the same type. Uh, if I say, Hey, this is a date, this is a dollar sign, probably not a good way to do it. So, um, so we, we have our own proprietary algorithm to do that. And then lastly is, um, the human, right? When a human does something, we learn from it. So there's machine learning on the back end. So the first time, like, you, like when I first joined this table, right? I'm like, hey, I don't know, because no one has tried to join Oracle and Snowflake before. So that's why we built it the first time, right? Now, now that I've built it the first time, any question I now ask that involves these two tables will then automatically suggest, here's the key that you can join in mind. Awesome. Um, and so that, that's, how, that's how we do it. And and the speed at which we do it is what allows customers to say, well, let me try this out. If it didn't work, let me try this out. And let me see what the answer looks like with an inner join. Let me see what the answer looks like with an outer join. And very quickly, the business users can then determine this is the one they want. Yeah. So this is a bit of a paradigm shift because in, in the traditional world, it's I got to spend four months to really make sure it's the right one to give to the business user. Yeah. Uh, and then you, might, you may still be wrong. <laughs> in our world is, do it fast and let the business user tell you yep. does it look right or wrong. And that feedback and the rating, the review and so forth is going to then train the machine learning and say, this is probably the most common one, right? And the one that you should use. Yeah. So kind of dovetailing off that, Peter asked, is there some kind of cost optimizer that's being used during the joints, especially when I'm going across um, different kinds of uh, te- technologies? Absolutely. Um, thank you to our friends at uh, Starburst. <laughs> so we do use their uh, cost-based optimizer uh, SQL capability. So it's going to look for the uh, the most efficient, uh, you know, resource uh, utilization when it comes to doing those joins. Uh, and it's going to recommend that, and we take that recommendation and we automatically pass it through. Okay. I'm gonna. I've got one question. I'm going to save t- towards the end because um, it'll, <laughs> it'll go back into demo mode. Um, uh, but uh, there is a, qu- uh, a inquiry on the cost of the product. You know, everybody gets this question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we, our licensing model is very simple. It's an annual subscription. There's only three components. Uh, there is a platform fee, and then there is a business user fee. And the, the business user is someone who's just going to 
uh, ask questions, search for questions, and you know, just explore. And then there's a power user, the guy that builds, right? The guy who puts together the data map, the lineage, the, the visualization, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's it. Those, those are the only three components. Okay. And is there any, what's the secret component behind that, the mapping of the column name versus the different data tags across the sources? Um, we actually have a patent on that. I, I don't, I, I don't think we've named it, <laughs> uh, but it, it is, it is proprietary, uh, yeah. that we've done, uh, just from all the experience that we have, uh, into looking at all the, it, it's more than one factor. It's the short answer is you have to look at more, several factors and then come up with a deterministic algorithm on what's the right one and then still save room for the machine learning because at the end of the day, no matter what we suggest the user, if they don't use it, you know it's not right, uh, and so that is that is why you know everything that we do is you know usage becomes a big thing, right? So for example, mm -hmm. even when I de determine what my page rank is going to be, and people can say, I want to look at, I want to put a different weighting on the number of answers, I want to put a number of a different weighting on the number of queries, because at the end of the day, like nothing tells me I, I've got it right or wrong. Then you know something's been queried forty four thousand times versus something's been queried fifty six times. Uh -huh. uh, it just helps me kind of get a, a different sense of whether or not I should use it or not. And we can still be wrong, but at least it, it might get you, it's like a Yelp review, right? Just get mm -hmm. you started in the right direction. Gotcha. Yep. All right. Um, and then PW asked if you could, he may have missed it, but could you show us how we would create and or edit a, a calculated metric? Uh, yes, yeah, so that's going to be right now. The, the way you would do that is you would go into the uh, SQL Builder uh, and do that. Um, and then in our next release, we'll actually you know do the UI version of that, uh, where you can do what's called create a custom function, right? So here, instead of just join filter group by, you'll have custom function that you can do. Uh, okay. But right now, what people will do is they'll just go into the SQL editor from here, and then they'll okay. do what they normally do because. The persona that would use this piece is usually like a data analyst um, or you know someone that's a bit SQL savvy uh, mm -hmm. for this piece. Um, or what we find is if it's a business user, they will stop here and then they would send this to the data analyst, the data engineer and said, hey, this is as far as I've got, right? Using the UI, uh, I'm not a SQL guy, so can you do the rest for me, right? Yeah. This is what I need to do, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, but in the next version, we'll actually have the create custom function uh, button here that you can then uh, select that and then to go from there. Fantastic. Wow, what a product. And look at that, right, at the, right at the 50 minute mark. KC, amazing. <laughs> yep. And thank everybody, you. thank KC, you. KC, you're great. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for having me. You betcha, sir.